let's let's pose this to our first guest this hour. She is a Tesla shareholder and the chief investment officer of Defiance ETF, Sylvia Jablonski. Sylvia, good morning to you. And you say that you're an investor, particularly at these levels. So what do you think Michael Burry might be getting wrong here? Good morning, and thanks so much for having me. I think, you know, if, if I look at Tesla and, you know, the reason why I'm an investor, I'll give you a little bit of an explanation. I think last year was a great year to be a Tesla trader, just like it was a great year to be a trader of a lot of the high growth stocks. And now a lot of those names have pulled back below their 200-day moving average. And for me, that's a great opportunity to buy. So I can understand, you know, if Mr. Burry is looking for short-term gains on you know, the price action on, on the downward in the in the near term. But I think in the long term, you want to be a buyer here because the story of Tesla is just great. You know, they're involved in energy. They're involved in battery production. They're so far ahead of everyone else. You know, they're not building their business on selling credits. That was just one of the things that bolstered profits this year. And yes, that will fade out. But as that fades out, this massive growth of expected, you know, expected to be 70 percent in battery electric vehicles this year is really going to, I think, balance that and lead Tesla in the right direction for the next three to five years. So, Sylvia, in the near term, about one year out, how much of the short case against Tesla rests on the macro environment? Burry also betting on a surge in inflation this year. Yeah, so I think, you know, inflation and fears about um, the 10-year are just, again, hitting high growth stocks. There's been a pullback in some of the EV names off of the idea that there's a shortage in semiconductors. So for Tesla specifically, you know, Model S, Model X, battery cells, some of that is going to be a little bit delayed, and that will impact short-term profits in the stock. But I think that this is a pretty good level and a pretty good low for Tesla to consider getting back in because, again, you know, there's just so much going on that benefits this stock. You mentioned President Biden visiting the uh, Ford plant today. Well, $174 billion is going to go to either consumer credits or the companies themselves that essentially develop these EV vehicles. That's a massive investment. You know, there's this push towards global carbon neutral, and that's going on in Europe and in China. You know, China and Europe are 60 percent of EV sales. And we have to catch up. So I think that even if there's more competition, there's short term delays, the long term story favors Tesla within the year, you know, maybe in the next couple of months or so, there's volatility in the stock. But right. I'm holding it for the long term. Well, that, that's what I mean, though, because, I mean, I don't think folks like Burry are, are in this for years or in much of anything for years, necessarily. They're, they're trading and they're placing bets. Um, would it shock you if Tesla dropped, Sylvia, along with the crypto trade and meme trade, uh, you know, not just volatility, but perhaps for months at a time. I wouldn't expect that to happen for months at a time, just because I think a lot of the infrastructure spending is going to come quickly and a lot of the advancements and sort of the, the work on the semiconductor side to, to pump out, you know, some of the chips and things to get these companies going again is going to happen within months. Uh, you know, for the next month or two, do we could we expect volatility and prices to pull back a little more? Sure. But I wouldn't expect him to sit in that trade for a long time. You know, you mentioned it in your intro. I mean, betting against Elon Musk for the last three years would have been a really bad idea. Finally, I, it's um, interesting. You look at a chart of Tesla over the past, really the past couple of weeks, and a chart of uh, Bitcoin. It looks like a tracking stock. And I wonder if you think that was Musk's intent or if maybe he has opened a bottle here that maybe he wants to put back in a little bit. If I had to guess, it might be a bottle that he might want to put back in a little bit. You know, I, I don't love the correlation of the two. I think that they're two completely separate creatures. But obviously, you know, Tesla saying that they will accept Bitcoin as payment it really boosted the price up. And now coming back and backtracking on that is really what's what's sort of shooting um, cryptocurrencies down, specifically Bitcoin down. So I don't love that, you know, sort of marriage between the two. And I personally hope it goes away. But I am bullish on both asset classes. I'm heavily invested in both asset classes. And I just think about future disruption innovation. So future and disruption innovation in payments and again in cars and uh, macro, macro backdrop again of, you know, regulatory favoring carb low carbon emissions and growth at EV. Yeah, maybe we have to look at, at uh, Tesla and Dogecoin together as well in the future. Sylvia, thank you so much, <laughs> Sylvia Jablonski.